Welcome everyone to Ask Apogee Live. My name is Rob and this is Roger. Good and afternoon. Today we have a fantastic show in store for you. Uh, many of you may know that we have Symphony IO Mark II, which is the absolute best Apogee converter ever made. And we're going to talk about a really exciting new networking option that we have just added to the Symphony IO Mark II ecosystem. So uh, let's, uh, let's kind of start off with some, some commonly asked questions. Now, as we go throughout this show, um, if you would comment below, if you have any questions uh, about Symphony IO Mark II or about networking, please comment below and we'll be answering those questions as we go. So let's dive right in, Roger. Okay. Our first question is, Okay, so we have networking. What is a sound grid network? Right. So we are announcing today a Symphony IO sound grid version. What is sound grid? Um, sound grid is a system that was developed by Waves, the plug-in people, right? Got the CLA compressor, the Renaissance. Um, and it's quite simply a system for transmitting audio over Ethernet. So if you've worked in an office, Ethernet, those are those wires that are connecting up all the computers, all the printers. Um, and it's a really convenient way to co connect up a bunch of different devices. So it's quite simply audio over Ethernet. Awesome. So like, what kind of components do you need to have a sound grid system? So right. here we have a few different things. What do you need to connect all of these things together? To get, a, to get it going. So first of all, a sound grid compatible audio interface. That's our big news. We now have a Symphony IO Mark II that is sound grid compatible. That's what you're seeing right here. Now, you can also get Waves DSP servers. And this is a way to run Waves and third-party compatible plugins so that they're running on this external server and not on your computer. Awesome. And then, of course, like any audio system, you have computers, both Mac and Windows, laptops, whatever you want to connect to your sound grid system. It's compatible with everything. Awesome. And so that's yeah. a really great point, too, for anyone who's wanted a Symphony IO uh, to work on a Windows computer. The SoundGrid Ethernet connectivity allows you to connect Symphony Mark II to Mac or PC. So if you've been waiting to kind of get it's a Symphony started. IO to connect to your Windows computer, um, you can do that using the, the SoundGrid protocol for sure. Yeah. Awesome. So we've got some more questions here. Yep. So um, how do you connect up a SoundGrid system? How does it right. all link together? How does it all really um, get your IT guy? No. Uh, that's one of the great parts about SoundGrid is it's really easy for a sound guy to, to set up. Yeah. So obviously you need Ethernet cables. These are uh, Cat5e or Cat6. Um, and you kind of look at it and you kind of say, 128 channels? Really? Is it that easy? It's amazingly simple. So here you've got an Ethernet switch. And these devices and these computers are quite simply connected with one uh, Cat5e cable. It makes it super simple. Now, that simplicity, it's great to know, but I think that there's kind of a different way of thinking about a sound grid system. And here, I want to kind of show you a few diagrams. If you think about being in an office, if everyone had their own computer and their own printer, it would kind of be chaotic. Everyone needs access to everything in an office, and that's really the concept behind sound grid. So David, if we can switch to my uh, handy diagrams, if you've got one audio interface, and it's connected to a computer, works fine by itself. You've got a second system maybe, and then even a third system. And that third system, I may connect a server to it. Now, those three audio systems are completely independent. You really can't transfer anything be between them. And that's what changes with SoundGrid. With SoundGrid, really everything is connected potentially to everything. So your audio interfaces are connected to every computer, the DSP server is available to any computer, and it means a new way of solving kind of audio setup problems. If you've got a large building that has to be configured with uh, several audio systems and several computers, SoundGrid is a great way to solve that problem. Awesome. All right. Thanks, yeah. David. No, and, and what's, what's really cool about it, too, is like you think about like a band. You know, you have the drummer who's maybe got a session on Logic on a Mac, right. and you've got like the keyboard player who's been working in Ableton on a PC, and you know, how do you kind of share that together? In the past, you'd bounce and send stems, and then right. make sure that somebody has a master hard drive. Um, with this instance, you can really connect up all those different computers on the different DAWs, the different uh, operating systems, different operating all together. Systems. Yep, all together, and you can stream 32 channels up to 128 channels. So you don't have to bounce. You don't have to make any compromises with your session. It all streams 
uh, through the uh, sound grid connectivity. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I mean, we, we had a, a, an experience with this where we had a laptop running Logic, and we had uh, some tracks running on it, and then we had a Windows PC running Ableton with an Ableton push connected, right. and you were able to trigger sounds on the Ableton push over the network and listen through the Symphony I.O., and the master system was the Mac, right. and it was all like in sync, and it all worked really, really well together. So. Right, yeah. At that show, that got drummer's approval when it came to the latency, <laughs> which is important. <laughs> awesome. Well, we've got a question in here um, from Leonard that says, is there any limit? Let's say 24-bit, 44-1, how many tracks through one system? So what's the limitation of a sound grid network? Right. So the, the limitation is, uh, with regard to sample rate, is up to 96K. And when it comes to channel count, mm -hmm. so you can have a total of 128 channels. Nice. Now you may, that may be uh, 20, let's say 32 channels of audio, and then 32 channels from one computer and 32 channels from the next. But you've got a very large routing grid, and that routing grid shows you all of your assets and then allows you to route wherever you need to go up to kind of a total of 128 channels. Yeah. So um, he asks a, a really uh, a great question here comparing to Thunderbolt 3. And I think that, Roger, you, you touched on that a little bit earlier about how Thunderbolt is a kind of point-to-point -point system. You just right. have one audio interface with one computer, and that's exactly. the limitation. Whereas with a network system, you can have multiple computers, multiple interfaces, all working on the same project at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Um, Thunderbolt is uh, very... very uh, high performance, but it's very limited in connecting multiple devices, like you say. He's got a quick question here about latency. So I know that okay. latency is a complex subject that you can dive into based on sample rate and your uh, various settings on the system. So right. give us some kind of key latency specs on the system. Right. So in general, if you're going between two devices on the network, two audio interfaces, you are going to have latency that is under a millisecond. And uh, when you're going between an audio interface and, let's say, your DAW, uh, there you're going to have a bit higher latency if you're going listening through the app. But again, SoundGrid has probably the most comprehensive low latency mixer available today. Yeah. It can be 64 channel inputs, plugins on, on all the inputs. So you can really set up a very uh, sophisticated low latency mixer. And again, your, your latency is going to be under a millisecond when you've got that low latency mixer going. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great question here. Um, we have another question from, uh, from James that says, are you going to offer different options instead of the 8x8 with 8 mic pre, i.e. a 16 mic pre or 24 mic pre? And right. I'll kind of take this one in that. Sure. It's, um, the cool thing about the networking options is that you could actually string multiple 8x8 with 8 mic pre's together on the same network. So before with uh, Thunderbolt, you're limited to two systems on our current implementation. Right. Um, with you know, Pro Tools HD, of course, you can link multiple systems together on that platform. But um, you could really kind of string multiple 8x8 with 8 mic pre's together if you'd like. Absolutely, yeah. And let's say you have some other outboard mic pre's. You wanted to use you know, eight of the Apogee mic pre's and then maybe eight Neve or API or you're choosing. You could do an 8x8 or excuse me, an 8 mic pre card and then a 16 by 16 converter so you could right. kind of blend the internal mic pre's with external. Yeah, and you know what, while we're on mic pre's, let's go there, let's go there. and David, if you can uh, quickly uh, go to the uh, computer. One of the great aspects of the sound grid network is it handles remote control very easily. So here, this is the mic pre control panel that is part of sound grid. So that means I can be in the control room uh, with uh, what I'm, you know, with my recording system, and I can have the mic pre's in a different building, and I can control them right from the desktop. So that's a pretty unique feature. Uh, it's it's quite easy to do. It's part of the SoundGrid system. So that's pretty unique for SoundGrid. That's really awesome. And you yeah. can you can get to all of your Symphony I/O settings from the software window as well. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just mic preamps, but sort of mic preamps is where you're definitely going to want to have something that's remote. Awesome. 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 So uh, we've got some other questions here. Great. So some systems require you to be connected to a, a DSP interface at all times right. to run your plugins. Right. How does SoundGrid Server handle this? Right. And this is where the SoundGrid Server really has some unique um, and incredibly useful functionality. So when you set up a plugin in what they call their uh, studio rack, you actually designate, do you want it to be running on the external servo, server or do you want it to be running natively? So if you're working on a laptop and then you disconnect the server, those plugins automatically 
set themselves back to native operation. They just automatically switch. You open up your session, press play, sounds precisely the same as when you had the server connected. It's, it's really a great cool. advantage. It's very, very cool. I mean, can you think that of those times, maybe you're using an external DSP server and you, you have to load all of your plugins and, I don't know, you, you have to rush out and get a bounce to someone super quickly, you know? And somebody calls up and says, hey, we need a, we need a vocal up bounce really quickly. And you don't have your interface around, you just have a laptop, um, you know, scrambling and trying to find an interface to connect it with the SoundGrid right. system. All of your plugins that were running on the server, if you're not connected to the server, Disconnect it, Disconnected. switches over to native, you can run your session and keep working. Yeah. Super convenient. It's a very convenient feature. Awesome. Um, we have Steven here, just for some clarification, he said 96K limit and 128 channels. So 128 channels at 96, or does the channel count drop uh, like 64 at 96? Right. I have to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. Here at Apogee, we're really uh, getting our head around the sound good system. So. I guess we'll have to post that as an update. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you uh, on, on that question there uh, if, if we have any channel count changes. So good, good question there. Awesome. So I have another question about live sound. Right. So some people are asking, um, you know, how can I use SoundGrid or, in fact, a Symphony I.O. Uh, with a live sound system? Right. And that's kind of another really exciting development whereby you've worked in the studio with the SoundGrid system with specific plugins. And now SoundGrid offers uh, their LV1 mixer. It's been out for uh, a good amount of time, and it's starting to get uh, some traction. I know that uh, Pitbull was using it in Las Vegas, his, nice. his sound guy. Um, and of course, LV1 is a completely uh, touch panel live mixer that, is, that utilizes the SoundGrid uh, system, the SoundGrid ecosystem. So plug-in servers. Symphony I.O. with mic preamps, it's all compatible with the live mixer, too. Um, imagine that audio system. It's, it's got Waves plugins, has a Symphony I.O. front end. That is like the highest fidelity uh, live system in existence. It's, it's really kind of cool. People really talk about taking what they've done in the studio and bringing it into the live environment. Right. And no other system gives you that same power. It's like you have the best possible converters and mic pre's that you can, you can possibly have going into the same plugins that you may have used to mix the record, that you right. can take that same exact rig and that you used in the studio, pull it into a live environment, run LV1, have all your plugins, have amazing symphony conversion, all in a live system. So. Right. And also, it's a live system that is surprisingly compact. It's a lot more compact than your typical front of house. It's touch screens, audio interfaces, and DSP servers, and that incorporates playback, uh, you know, playback of pre-recorded effects. It's got recording of your show, all in a package that you could probably fit on an airplane if you had to fly to your gig in Europe. Yeah. So it's um, it really does seem like the future of kind of high quality, complicated front of house. Uh, kind of mixing with all these different kind of elements in it. So really that's awesome. exciting. Awesome. Our friends from Waves actually chimed in and confirmed 128 channels at 96K. Well, great. So thanks, thanks for, guys. for the confirmation there. We appreciate it. So, yeah, you see it's collaboration, and uh, <laughs> we're even collaborating here. Yeah, so, so awesome. I mean, this is a, a really, uh, obviously, a fantastic thing. We do have one other question, is how many different interfaces can you use together? So let's say right. you have a multi-room system. How many different um, interfaces can right. you have on one network? So um, David, what I might do is kind of quickly uh, jump over to uh, my screen here. Um, this is the SoundGrid Studio uh, really control panel. The thing I love about this control panel is if you're an audio engineer, it really makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm going to zoom in on these device racks. And you'll see that there are eight Hardware I.O. device device racks. So that means you can hook up to eight audio interfaces. Now, considering you can do 32 channels of Symphony I.O. in one interface, uh, really, you've got, you can get to 128 channels plus. But so you can connect up to eight audio hardware I.O.s, up to eight computers, and then multiple uh, DSP servers as well. So this is your system inventory, um, and it makes it very easy to see what's available in your system. Awesome. Really cool. Well, if anybody else has additional questions, please feel free to uh, comment below. 
And then uh, you can always go over to our website. It's www.apogeedigital.com. We have a little section that says Ask Apogee. And you can send us a message, and we are always there to answer. So we'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible. So again, if anyone has uh, questions, you can post in the comments below. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. All right, and thanks for your questions. All right, cheers, guys. Bye-bye.